narrative about global warming and how we're ruining Mother Earth and she's crying. A Gaia message, a message right out of Gaia. And I've explained to you who it came from. He didn't write it. I know that this, the divine man who's the vicar of Christ on earth is a genius and better than you and I. But the fact is, is that what he spoke about, when he spoke about the environment, had nothing to do with his own views because he doesn't know anything about climate. It was written for him by a German radical follower, not of God, but a man who follows Gaia. It's all in government zero. So if you're so open-minded that you're willing to look at the facts, go and read about it in my book. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The Catholic Church is so ingrained in the nation's charity work that it's quite worrisome. The Catholic Church is so much ingrained in the government's welfare system that it's sort of one and the same which is why this welfare state government rolled out 10 red carpets for Pope Francis. They're in business together. Now you could take the religious side and say he's the vicar of Christ, and I don't deny that. That's your belief system, and I respect that greatly. But as a secular individual in talk radio, I find it quite revolting that a religion would take over an entire nation. What is this about? When have you last seen any religious figure speak before Congress? The answer is never. It's never happened in history. Why is it happening, if you ask yourself that question? When have you last seen a man, due to the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the American people, what Obama has been doing? Never before in American history. What does one thing have to do with another? Follow the dots. Follow the money. Follow the dots and follow the money. It's a simple game. And it's an offensive time for those of us who've been following this uh, man in the White House all these years and see what he's gotten away with and what he's doing because of guys like John Boehner, the compromised John Boehner, who resigned today. You think that that so-called shock of Boehner resigning was uh, not timed precisely the day the Pope arrives uh, in the at the U.N.? Well, what is this about? Can you put all the pieces together? Who brought the Pope to America? Who lobbied for him to break down the walls between church and state? John Boehner. Did you know that? Did you know it was John Boehner who, who has been pushing for this for many years? Did you know that? Now, why would Boehner resign the day he achieved his goals? Don't know. But there are many ways John Boehner failed conservatives, which led to his resigning today. And remember, remember why he resigned. Forget about the crying. Forget about Obamacare. Forget about his voting to inflate the nation's debt over and over again. Forget about his unwillingness to fight to defund the abortionists, the baby killers, the genocidal maniacs in Planned Parenthood. Forget about him working with Obama around the clock and golfing with him. Don't forget about those things, even though I said forget about him. In fact, think about those things as you forget about him. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. All right, it's a rough day. It's a rough day for thinking people, I got to tell you. To see a nation with, uh, there's no other word but mass hysteria. There's mass hysteria. Now he's at a Harlem school, and the kids are pawing them, the Pope. In Congress, they weren't allowed to even do a selfie. No one could touch the man. Remember they said protocol requires... No applause, no no fist bumps. Now he's around the kids in Harlem and letting them do everything. They're kissing him, they're hugging him, they're giving him baseballs. Everyone's got a selfie. What are the selfies with the Pope going to do for them? Do you think it's going to get him a job when they graduate college? Here I am with Pope Francis when I was nine. I don't know the world I live in, a world of narcissism. The very thing the Pope said, don't be a narcissist, there he is posing for selfies. What a place to tell the kids, hey, look. Put your cameras down and think about the poor. Instead, he's smiling with them. Addressing Congress, he tells us to take in more immigrants. We take in more legal immigrants than all nations on earth put together. He tells us to be kind to the poor. Well, Catholic charity breaks off about a billion and a half dollars a year from us out of taxpayer money. The courtesy of Obama. Yeah, they do very well. Reminds me of what I heard about the missionaries in Hawaii when I first lived there in the 1960s. 
I didn't know how there was a thing called leasehold land in Hawaii. I didn't know what it was. And the leasehold land, it seems, were owned by family trusts, the original five families, all descendants of missionaries. I said, how could that be 100 years later or more? Well, a Christian woman I knew, a very good one, said, you see, the missionaries came here to Hawaii to do good, and they did very well indeed. That was what they said in those days. Now, that's a high-class way of saying they're a bunch of crooks and thieves who use the message of God to rob uh, the land from the people. That's all. When is this going to end? When in the world does this man go back to Rome and leave us alone, alone already? When does it, this end? When does this media coverage of this religion end? When does it stop? I, I frankly find it nauseating. How can our media give itself over to a religion like this day and night without people revolting against it? Is there something wrong with my message? I want to know. Is there anyone else out there who is fed up with the around-the-clock Pope coverage day and night and night and day for four days now? I'm sorry with the crosses already and the waving. There are, I thought we're a multicultural nation. I thought we welcomed diversity. Where's the diversity in this message? It's the imposition of a religion upon everybody is what it is. It's getting, it's getting me angrier by the minute. I, maybe I should stop. Pope Francis meeting group of immigrants at school in East Harlem, New York. Isn't that nice of him? How many immigrants have they taken into the Vatican recently? Answer, zero. Uh, how big is the wall around the Vatican? Thicker than any medieval castle. It's about 100 feet thick at the base. A wall that even Donald Trump couldn't build in 25 years. A wall probably built with slave labor back when it was built. What hypocrisy, my God. You know, if anything, this visit is going to make people even more cynical of the church. The mass hysteria is one thing, but those people in this country who are not Catholic are not buying this, by the way. And I don't think every Catholic is eating this, is taking the hook, line, and sinker. It's enough already. Why must he be here day after day after day? Why couldn't he just give a speech and go home already? Wasn't enough he had to speak to the UN, then he said, Congress, UN, Ground Zero. Then at Ground Zero, they have everyone there, the rabbis, the Buddhist monk, the uh, Hindu. And everybody was chanting in their own language, Sanskrit, Hebrew, English, you name it. Incense was being waved around. Uh, I never saw anything like it. But the one that got me the most was the, was the rabbi. The reform rabbi got my goat. A sanctimonious young guy gets up and says, those who destroyed the World Trade Centers did it in the name of God. No, Rabbi, I didn't do it in the name of God. He did it in the name of Allah. They screamed Allah Akbar when they crashed the planes into... See, unless you name the enemy, you're never going to defeat him. That's why the enemy is defeating us. That's why we're being defeated by radical Islam, little by little, with their front groups in the White House, their front groups in CIA, their front groups in the State Department, their front groups in the media. We are being slowly eaten away by Sharia law. We're being destroyed from within because we won't even name the enemy. Why? Because of the two-faced phony in the White House who won't even call it radical, radical Islam. Remember when the Charlie Hebdo murders occurred, when radical Muslims machine-gunned and hacked to death cartoonists in Paris? All of the world's leaders met in Paris except one. Your skinny, phony president. Your skinny, rotten, phony, Marxist, anti-American president would not go to that, to that anti-Muslim, uh, uh, anti-radical Muslim rally. He wouldn't go there. He wouldn't even call it radical Islam. Remember what most recently happened uh, in the middle of the summer? When a Muslim was going to go berserk on a train and three American off-duty soldiers uh, constrained him? Do you remember? That he would not even, uh, wouldn't even mention the word radical Islam? You don't see the brainwashing. Well, the Pope is continuing the brainwashing. This Pope had the opportunity to say, in the name of world peace, I demand, I demand that every Muslim on earth Constrain the maniacs amongst your religion who are burning our churches to the ground across the Middle East. In the name of peace, in the name of world peace, I appeal to my Muslim compatriots to do something to stop the maniacs from raping and killing our women in the Middle East. Did he say that? No. So don't tell me he's the vicar of Christ. The man is a politician who got where he is by doing today what he's been doing his whole life. I'm sick of it. And if you want to talk about it, I guess we can, but I'm sick of talking about it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. And by the way, as the Pope tones down his message, 
African bishops are going berserk. They're condemning moral decadence. Saw this this morning of Breitbart. The Catholic bishops of Africa are out with a blistering statement condemning what they call filthy campaigns that promote a culture of death. That's quite a contrast to the softer message that Pope Francis is delivering in the United States. It is a direct reference to the campaigns of Westerners to convince Africans to accept American and European style homosexual sexuality, including contraception, abortion, and an expansive notion of sexual orientation, which is a pleasant way of saying something else. And these are issues that Pope Francis mentioned only obliquely, obliquely during his few days in Washington, D.C. And so they're quite angry about the civilization of death. They're very angry about the agents and civilization of death from the West coming to Africa to tell them to not be so brutal in their analysis of a religion. No, the African leaders, especially the African uh, bishops, are quite clear. They say that this sexual insanity is a new type of slavery. And they say that Africans who agree with this liberal view of Catholicism have sold their sovereignty for a lentil st stew. African bishops. They say these political and economic pressures have but one objective. The drastic control and reduction of the African population, the planned destruction of marriage and the family. Those are the African bishops. And you didn't hear any of that language today or yesterday or the day before from our visitor from Rome. And I think on that note, I'll take a few more calls and we're going to move on to other topics. WBAP Rich, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. You're on the radio with millions of listeners. What's on your mind? Michael, I'll tell you, I've been listening to you all week. I've listened to you for years. I was so angry at you today when I began listening because I'm a very, very staunch, conservative Roman Catholic. I grew up in uh, New York City. But you know what? You've made so much sense today. And, and, and just the last thing you said before you put me on the phone about what you felt the Pope should have actually said because you have been so right on about the Muslims and what our president's doing. And you know, Michael, as I listen, I just reflected a, a certain couple of thoughts on the book of Revelation when it talks about the uh, false prophet uh, and, and the person that's going to rise up and the Antichrist. And it has also been prophesied that we'll have a bad pope. And both of them will unite together. And you know, Michael, as I'm listening to you this week, and today particularly, I'm saying, this guy is right on again. And I hate, I hate saying this because I love my religion. But from the very get-go, I've had a question about Pope Francis. From the mere fact that he but you see, I have, not, I have not said anything but positive things about this great religion of Catholicism. Not one word have I criticized the true Catholic religion or, or the Catholic teachings? I've looked up to it. How many times has I, as a non-Catholic, have looked at Catholics to save us from the creeping progressivism in the synagogue, in the Presbyterian church? Wherever you turn, the progressive liberals have destroyed religion. I used to love Catholics that they stuck to their guns and they were conservatives. And then I wake up and suddenly there it is. There he is. Obama with a, with a white robe all of a sudden coming from Rome. So, okay, you can understand my outrage when he had such an opportunity to put the radical Islamists in their place, and he didn't. He didn't speak for the, for the Christian girls who were being raped around the clock in these horrible places in the Middle East by Muslim maniacs. Did you know that that's part of the reason that many of these losers go and join ISIS, because they're told they're going to get girls to rape? Did you know that? No, I didn't. Oh, my God. Yes, I know all of this. I study it. It's what I do for a living. How do you think they appeal to the world's slime? the vermin from the gutters of every country on earth, these uneducated morons who join ISIS. What are they joining for? They're told that they're going to get to keep the booty that they get uh, when they invade a, a village. They get to rob people and rape the girls, and then they get a girl assigned to them. They can rape them around the clock, eight years old. This is going on right as I speak, and I'm not making up a word of this. And the Pope failed us, and he failed those girls, and he failed Christianity itself. That's how I feel. And I can't take any more of the hypocrisy. And I see this, this mass hysteria of the media. It's bad enough that there's mass hysteria from school children. We'd expect it from children who don't know any better. Here's Neil Cavuto. Neil Cavuto, all of them gushing all over the Pope. Not one word of criticism on Fox News. What are they thinking? Look, I, I hope the Pope, I wish him well, he should live to the age of Moses, but it's enough with his, his Leninism. 
if you'll stay in the line, I'm going to send you one of the first copies of Government Zero. I, I, I can't take it anymore. 